Hello and welcome to the second online plugging dough lesson. Um, today we're going to continue to build on some of the fundamentals that make up the system, uh, primarily looking at our footwork. Um, last lesson we went through some of the stances, um, the workers evasions, and then we looked at how we move, um, primarily with using something called the arrow steps. Um, to start off with, let's bow in and then we'll get into our warm up and get to work. Okay, good. So what we're going to do today is just start pretty active. We want to get this, this heat into the body, keep us moving. So all we want you to do to start with is just bouncing up and down on your toes. Okay, so we want to gain some, some distance off the floor. Okay, so once we've got that, we're then going to start to step out, and in, out, and in. Just let these hands relax, let them do what they want. I'm going to try and release any tension into the shoulders, the chest, the back. So just let the arms go. This is going to become important when we start to look at our punching and how we throw the techniques together. Okay, and forwards and backwards. Okay, so get in some height. Just trying to lengthen these muscles. Keep your body upright, nice and straight. And just try and bounce off your toes. Don't let your heels touch the floor. Good, out and in. Okay, so we're going to do two each in each direction. So one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, and this time we're going to put crisscross in the back. So we're going to do cross, cross, forward, forward. Good. Okay, so hopefully we're starting to get some heat into the body there. What I want us to do now is reduce our jump. So we're not going to look to jump off the ground. But instead, we can use this energy on the floor to push up. Okay, but I don't want my feet coming off the ground. I'm just going to push, push, push. Knees nice and loose, so let your energy drop to the floor and push off it. Okay, so we're gonna go 10 from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and out wide. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and forward. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the other way. Okay, now if you've got the room, what you want to start to do is start to move forward just with your bounce. And back. Just again, so your feet aren't coming off the floor, it's not a jump, it's there to push. Again, relax these elbows, relax your shoulders. Good, and back to your center, bring it to one, two, three, and pick the jump up, two, and then the leg. Good, okay, let's start putting some punches in. So jabbing up, jabbing up. One, two, one, two, threes. One, two, threes, and back. 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 And changing sides. One, two, three, and back. One, two, three, and back. One, two, three. Good, nice and loose on those sides. Good. Okay, let's shake it off. Okay, so the reason we were doing these Bouncing movements was just to try and get you to feel that we're drawing energy up out of the ground. Okay. Now, a lot of us in lessons, when we're practicing these stances or these steps, quite often become a big movement, a big jump. But all of our energy comes from the ground and through the body, 
rather than just the individual limbs moving, okay? So if we're doing a step or a stance, it's not just the legs that move, but it's the whole body. We project the energy through the body, which eventually comes into our strike. So if I'm doing an arrow step, for instance, which we're about to work on, as the energy starts here, the bottom of my foot, travels up my leg, up my back, across my shoulders, and eventually out through my hand. Okay, so it's gonna push, push, and then punches through. I push, and I come through. What I don't wanna see in the arrow step is a push up and a jump. Push up and a jump. Push up, okay, it's a push and a step. Push and a step. I wanna stay nice and loose, relax these hips, almost like you're in a sword dancing position. Yeah, you wanna stay nice and loose here, yeah? So push and step, push and step. Now something we commonly see in the lessons too is what I call the zombie leg. So people end up doing this front step here, and they drag this top leg across, drag across, okay? You're not moving. Remember, we need to be able to move in any direction when we use this arrow step, which is primarily our entering step into either an attack or a step away in defense. Okay, so nice and loose in the hips. Knees are flexed, nice and loose. And I push, and I step, push, and I step, push, and I step, push, and I step. Okay, keep these arms nice and loose. Let's just keep them at their waist for a minute and watch what happens to the hands. As I push and I'm relaxed and I allow the energy from the ground to push up and go through my body. Okay, so as I push here, this hand automatically moves. Yeah, same here, push, this hand actually looks nice and floppy. But that becomes my punch. Because a lot of people, when they throw the punches, we're very tense, so we get into this, this heavy position where we tense the shoulders, we tense our back, and we've got concrete blocks on the end of these hands. So when I push, I'm trying to pick through a big punch, big punch, but what you're actually doing is shortening all these muscles down and you're reducing the amount of power which you can throw. Okay, so by being nice and loose, and then allowing you to push off that ground, okay, and draw the energy up through the ground, it allows me to, bam, the hand punches itself. Punches, bam, it comes out itself. Okay, so I drop and I push, drop and I push. So when, I, when I'm able to use that grind and push through, it means I haven't got to forcefully throw my hand forward, it throws itself. But not only does it throw itself forward, it comes back naturally, which allows me to throw another punch or subsequent punches off the same hand. Okay, so I'm in this position, a step, bam. Okay, nice and loose. These hips down, step and push, step and push, step and push, bam, and push. Okay, so you start to put some punches in together with this now. So step, one, two, one, two, two. Okay, so the steps also work in reverse, as we said, they work in a defense situation. So again, nice and flexed, loosen the legs, loosen the hips. If I've got an attack coming towards me, all I do is I push off the front leg this time and I stick it back. Yeah? So I push forward, I push back, I push forward, I push back. Now these will form the, the fundamentals of your fighting system. When I say hooking dough is built around the individual, but these fundamental movements, these fundamental shapes will allow you to go on and develop the way that you want to fight, the way that you want to, to move ultimately. Okay, so as we, we build on the steps and we build on movement uh, throughout the Hoikindo system, uh, the other large section that we really got to understand is our blocking, our parrying, the, the primary thing that, that stops us from getting hit when we're in combat, when we're sparring, or in a fight situation. Now, the blocks have just got to be simple. Um, at the end of the day, it's based on movement. It's based on the idea that we just don't get hit. Okay, although, you know, if we are fighting, then you know, the chances are we are going to get hit at some point. So the, the blocks are primarily, uh, they, they're going to come from your fighting position. You know, we talked about this in the last lesson. Just making sure we're again, we're, as we do with the arrow steps, our hips are relaxed, the knees are slightly flexed. We've got this raise in the back foot that allows us to push off. Uh, because again, if we, a term I like to use is if we're flat footed, it's, and if we were a car, it's like the engine's not running. If we've got a, this back foot engaged, the muscles flexed, and ready to contract when, when we need it, 
then we're in first gear, we're, we're free to move um, with a hand to start the engine. So in your own guard position, your hands are up and you're protecting yourself, like I said, trying to cover your centre line pr primary, uh, obviously with a, your, your lead hand coming in, which is different to a, um, if you imagine like a Western boxing sort of style, whereas in Western boxing they would have their lead hand as their strong hand, sorry, their, their lead hand as their weak hand and their strong hand as their back hand. In Hoi Kien Do, we want to close the distance, we want to close that gap a lot quicker, so we choose our lead hand to be our strongest hand, you know, because we, we look to fight from a shorter distance where we're not looking for a, a large extension on the, on the back punch. So in your own guard position, covering the centre line, you've got your Wu Tse hand to protect either way, trying to protect these ribs, turning this front leg in slightly so protecting that groin again the centre line. Hands free to do what you want as long as we're protecting this main core because it is what we're looking at. Okay, so the blocks we're looking at is first and foremost is your pack say, coming from the Wing Chun aspect of the Hoi Kun Do system. And your pack say is just a palm block. Okay, so my hands are in this position, fingers closely knitted together, thumb tucked back. And when I'm in the fighting position, I've got a strike coming straight down to me, all I'm looking to do is push that hand away. You notice I've got a slight swivel in my shoulder, but that punch is coming straight down the middle. My pack saber is coming here, it's pushing. I just want to slightly shift. Okay, so if any punch did come in, then it's starting to go past my face, past the target in which it was aimed for. Okay, so I'm just looking to push in one and push in two. So it can come off the front hand, it can come off my back hand, my Russo hand. Yeah, comes in here, or it can come in here. What that allows you to do is once you've moved that attacking hand out of the way, it's obviously freeing the next one up. Your strikes as we did in a hand drill um, the other day as we go back, 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 yeah. So all I would say is in your on guard position, it's just look to start to practice how we're throwing these pack saves out. Now it's good if you can look in a mirror when you do this, or if you're lucky enough to have a training partner at home, it's just line up for a punch, an extended hand against the head or the chest, draw back, and then throw out, and then you can practice the pack saves back and forth. What I would prefer to see is not you stood in a prone position here. We were just practicing like this. This is good to learn form, but if we want to learn it in a, in a, a practical sense, then we need to be in a fighting position and learn to see how we can move with that. So as well, I'm going to show you through three blocks as we go through this, but that's the first one. And as we get the three together, then we can go to a freestyle sort of shadow boxing system um, where we're just looking to practice these blocks and see how you feel. Okay. So your pack say comes up here, up your one and up your two. What we don't want is your paxe to extend past your body because this is going to allow a trap to come in and collapse upon me, okay? And it also opens this area, as you can see, opens all of this for another punch, yeah? So all we want is push to the centre line and I shift off. Centre line and I shift off. One, two. One, two, yeah? One, two. Good. Um, also, the, uh, the paxe works if we've got a strike coming to the stomach or a kick coming towards the stomach. And although a shape would change a little bit, the pack save just actually comes down and pushes. And this is where your arrow step or your, your cat stance would come into play. So if there's an arrow step, I'd be back up. Or if it was a cat stance, I'd be drawing. Okay. So it just pushes down. But again, the important part about this is keeping that thumb tucked, these fingers together, and we block with the palm. Remember, it's pack save stance or push and palm block. Okay. Or palm block. So we get from there, and we can push down, okay? What you don't want to do is leave your hands there either. I don't want to push here and leave that, because again, I'm leaving all this area open. So I'll be push and I'll be back up, okay? Don't dwell on your blocks, don't leave them there to be trapped or to be tied up in another situation, okay? So it's one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, yeah? So we've got that one to practice. Next one would be your slapping palm block, which is where we incorporate both hands into the block. It starts off with what we call a knife hand, so your back hand would come in, it would cut the hand away, and then your pack say, your palm block would push the hand off again. So it'd be one, two this time. One, two, and again, this opens this area here, ready for your strike. Yeah, one, two, one, two. You get my hands mixed up. One, two, okay, one, two. Knife hand, pack set. Knife hand, pack set. You can see it from this side. My back hand would go knife. My front hand would go pack set. Yeah? One, 
to the end. So if I got the other side, do one, two. Works again with a kick coming to the body. This time I would use my knife hand first and then my pack so in front of that again. One, two. Yeah? One, two. Okay, so the third block uh, would be the snake hand. It's a block that we touched upon in the last lesson uh, when we started doing the hand drill. But it's really the primary block of the hoiking drill system. It's the one that allows us to build up power through movement and continue moving. Now what you get with a lot of old, maybe some sort of traditional blocks, which I'm probably going to come under a lot of scrutiny for saying, is they are static blocks in some sense. You know, they're very rigid. Okay, now, for instance, you can get a, a and just a basic arm block which would come up here, bang, but it doesn't allow me a lot of movement after it, yeah, a lot of solid blocks coming in. And even for some, uh, some circumstances, the Tan Tso in, in Wing Chun, you know, where it's maybe been lost in a sense of what it's supposed to be, but I've seen very rigid Tan Tso's coming in, but they bang, just like blocks of wood. It's like you've become the wooden man in, in the Tan Tso, because your Tan Tso should be a fluid motion, yeah? Okay, so the snake, the idea of this is it coils, so I'm in my on guard position, and again, it coils into my center line, so it draws the punch. It's coiling into my center line, but it's not just that that's moving, but it's also my hips. Okay, so it draws and bang. Okay, so it draws and bang. So, like we did in the first the beginning of this lesson, we started using this sort of bouncing technique. Yeah, this allows us to do that. Yeah, so I'm using that, that energy from the ground in order for me to push and eventually throw it. Good. Okay, so from your center line it draws, but my hips move with it. So it's not just a single motion, it's not just now I'm moving. As I said at the beginning of this lesson, whole body movement, not individual limbs, whole body movement. So I look to draw, I look to strike. Draw and strike. Okay, and so before we sort of tie all of these blocks in together, uh, we also need the strikes in order to, to move with them. And just going through some of the basic strikes that we use in, in the Hoi Kindo system, uh, primarily we would use the, the straight fist, or what we consider to be the most direct hand or direct strike, and, and comes from the Chinese fighting arts, particularly from the, the Wing Chun aspects again, uh, which allows us the, the close range fighting rather than relying on uh, what we, the other jabs, the jabs and crosses we use on a, what we consider to be medium range fighting, so a boxing sort of range. Now, the straight fists, um, again, can be confused with being quite a rigid movement. Uh, we can see guys just pop and throw them out, and it does, it, it moves straight through our center line, so in my own guard position here, my straight fist comes straight through my strength, straight line, uh, my center line, sorry, and pushes through, okay? But what we don't want to do is see this motion end here, okay? You've got to have impulsive force, which means if I hit something, that force has got to travel back in order for it to transfer through my body for something else to throw away. There's no good in just throwing one big punch and leaving all of your energy on the end of that, which allows you then subsequently to be open and hit probably in the exchange of, of punches and kicks, etc. Okay, so your straight fist on guard position in your a loose hand position, wherever you may be, and your straight fist literally just shoots out straight in front of you, but snaps back. Now it's going to act like a whip. Now you notice where my elbow is in my own guard position, okay? It's low. And again, I'll use this step, this push off the ground, and that's going to force my elbow into the first part of the motion, not my shoulder, where we see a lot of that, okay? You now shoulder movement boom, will come in, hyper extends, it extends all of your, your back here, your lats, and it ultimately can help extend you and put you off balance. So you need to be centered in your, in your position. My bang, and I snap, and it snaps back. Out, and back. Out, and back. And I say it's got like a whip, so I don't want to be clenched fist all the way through that stride. Yeah, because it doesn't allow me to get that whip. Yeah, so what I need to do, nice loose hand, and it doesn't actually clench into the fist until impact. Boom, and then it whips back, okay? Just bam, and bam, and bam, and yeah? From the front position, it would be there. Bam, bam. Again, I've got to watch these lights, make sure I don't go hitting those again. And, 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 
okay? Now that can quite often develop into something else, what we call the chain punch. And the chain punch is a connection of punches. Traditionally, it's all off the, off the straight fist, but it could come into jabbing, it could come into crossing. But just to start off from a basic position, your chain punch will be one punch after another. Kind of like a train in motion, okay? So as I throw one out, that bounces back, the next hits. Again, coming from that Wing Chun fighting position. So I'd usually hit that same spot time and time and time again. Again, not to be used all the time, but certainly when you've got that opening, it can be very effective. Particularly effective in breaking down a defence. If you've got an opponent on the back foot, it's very good for bringing, breaking down into that. Okay? So just in that position, again, hips nice and loose, a lot of people with a chain punch, they will do this and then they'll raise those shoulders, clench this chest, which eventually they're just gonna burn out, okay? Relax it, allow it to whip out. Okay, so use those that push. Okay, so you get the idea of building that up. Now the other punches we do use are probably uh, more widely used, which would be the jab and the cross. When I was in your jabbing position, what you're looking to do here is get that rotation of the, of the push off the back leg and the rotation of the hip on the front that's allowing you to come through. Bang, but again, you wanna whip that back in. Okay, so a little bit different with my straight punch. When my straight fist stays here, with my jab, there will be a slight twist on it and pulls back. Okay, so it pulls, comes back. Once that one's come in, my jab, and I'll push and rotate off that back leg, and that will become my cross, okay? So front hand is your jab, back hand is your cross, okay? So again, you use a lot of these on a punch bag, on focus mitts, or even when you're sparring, but it's more of a medium range. I want to keep what I call my range finder, I want to know where my opponent is. I want to keep them out there until I'm ready to close that gap and start using it. Work to my straight punches and my, uh, my chain punches. Okay, so what we're going to do now is begin to put it all together. And that is just in a shadow boxing form. Just want you to see on your feet, get that, that push again, find where you are. And just start throwing a couple of punches but also start incorporating your blocks, okay? So it could be throwing a one, two, three, back set, and up, back set, up, could be a block, okay? I could be throwing my snake hand in, bam. So a snake hand, a back set, strike, and strike, okay? So it's just a case of freewheeling, you know, being nice and fluid with your motion, um, not too restricted, because as I said, the moment we're restricted, we restrict our movement, so don't be too rigid in how you're moving, and you're nice and free. Yeah. Again, work your ranges, work high, low, low, and to high, okay? Start incorporating all these stances that we've built up over the last two lessons, okay? I'll leave you with that. Hopefully it's something for you to continue to practice over the next week. Um, again, thoughts, comments, feed them back to me. Um, because at the end of the day, without that, it's very hard to focus where we're going with these lessons. Yeah. Chen.